Well, hello my friends, it's Sean Petit and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Look at this grungy goodness. Here are some of the supplies that we'll be using today. So I'm starting today's project on an 11 by 14 MDF board and I'm using Liquitex Matte Medium to put my initial background papers down. Now these background papers are the examples that I used to kind of show off the new stencils in the last video and I, I'll link, leave a link to that if you haven't seen that. Um, but I have a ton of these kinds of papers and so I decided to use them and I knew that I could have them kind of show through into the background but they're great for the texture that I was looking for and for some of that pattern to kind of peek through. So the matte medium is still wet and I'm just grabbing some black gesso and um, putting that down. And the matte medium kind of makes it transparent um, so it's not quite as thick as it's regular black, as regular black gesso mixed in with that matte medium. Grab some fawn, which is kind of a warm brown color, just to kind of warm that up so it's not quite so stark black. Um, I'm using, this is the Carved Line stencil, one of the new stencils um, that just came out. I love this stencil, it's great for pattern. Um, but I'm just rever I'm doing some reverse stenciling here and just kind of pulling up that color. One, to get more texture because when I pull that color up it kind of leaves a line. And two, for pattern. And then <clears throat> I'm just kind of getting some little bit of value in there by adding a little bit of darker gesso and then kind of bringing that down so that I wasn't sure how far I was going to bring those the, the collage papers in so I just kind of brought that black down. This is the carved up stencil and again all these all the new stencils are great for pattern making and um, just some fun some fun marks. Adding more black gesso and white gesso um, to just kind of get some movement in there and just add to the layers because um, I really wanted this to be a grungy wall. And I have a whole story that goes along with <clears throat> this piece and the meaning and the inspiration. And basically I wanted this to look like an old brick wall like you would see downtown that might have some graffiti or old posters peeling. That's kind of the inspiration behind this. Where the paint is faded and you see some of the pad, some of the picture or paintings underneath some of that paint. And so that's kind of where I was going with this. Uh, I'm just kind of pulling up the paint and um, spritzing a little bit of alcohol in there right now and pulling that up just to kind of lighten it up and give it some uneven kind of speckled um, rain mark kind of thing. A um, little bit of uh, um, Liquitex acrylic um, ink in carbon black dripped down again to kind of represent that wall. And again to give it some interest in some pattern as well. Just picking that up just because I want it to be there but I don't want it to you know be so um, focused and so I spritz that down with some water and then I'll pick it up a little bit more with some with my um, paper towel. So I knew that I needed some collage papers for the bottom and I had a whole bunch but I wanted a specific color and so I just took again one of those papers from the examples of the new stencils and I'm using gesso and teal, Lucas Acrylic Teal, and some Thicket, Deco Art Thicket. This is a Stabilo All pencil that I kind of put in there just to get some, again, kind of graffiti, grungy kind of marks. And just kind of layered it all up. And then again, I'm going to do some reverse stenciling here and pick up that pattern. And this is the um, Spanish Tile 2 stencil, another new stencil. And so this this did not go according to plan. The paint dried super fast because it's non-gessoed and paper. And so I'm picking up the, trying to pick up the paint and it worked in some areas and not in other areas. But as I peeled that back, it tore the paper and I was like, yes, it was so perfect. Um, because again, I'm looking for that kind of peeling like paper on the side of the wall kind of, um, kind of the thing. So anyway, I was super happy with that. Those collage papers there that you just saw are going to be available in the resource library for you for free. Those were done um, in my last video and so I will have a link to that as well. And I'm just now cutting that piece there is again a, a sample of one of the new stencils. 
I've had that love word forever and I was waiting for the right thing and here it is. So there's our collage piece of paper that we made and it is perfect, perfect. Look at that with the tear in the paper. So these are the collage papers that are going to be free to you in the resource library. Um, they are awesome and perfect for bits and pieces in your projects. Oh, so, so good. So I'm just cutting those up and kind of staggering them again to look like they're, they were just pieces of old papers or posters or different things kind of left behind pieces of graffiti and different things like that. An old city building wall is what I was going for in, in kind of an abstract way, of course. I'm using some gel medium to put the papers down because I didn't want them to wrinkle too much because I've got a lot of texture going on right now um, with the upper part and then all the papers and I knew I was going to do some stenciling and so I needed somewhat of a smoother surface to get some good stencil images. So I've got all the papers down now and I wanted to stamp with my stencil. This is the Spanish Elements stencil. Wait till you see this. Hold your breath. Look at that. At this point I was like, I don't, I'm not going any further. I'm done. <laughs> but I, I had a whole plan and a whole um, quote and everything. So I continued, but you can bet I'm using this stencil again just for, look at that. That, I mean, my goodness, just makes my heart happy. And then you've got the paper that you've spray painted um, to use too. Oh, so good. So it's all dry and now I've got the Liquitex um, acrylic ink out again in black. And I wanted to kind of just kind of soften up some of those areas because I knew I was going to be stenciling right across that area there. And I needed some little bit darker in there so that the, the stenciling that I do is going to show up and to kind of soften some of those straight lines. And so I just kind of really watered that down and then we'll come back and just pick it up so that it's just subtle black. It's not super, super black. Um, and plus I wanted, I didn't want to hide too much of everything else that was already down. Um, but I love, love how this look is looking at this point and I'm just happy with how it progressed and how it tells the story. This is Liquitex um, acrylic ink in uh, raw umber and just kind of warming that up, giving it a different tone than the black. And then I'll just go back in and pick that up so that it's not too, too overpowering. But that stamped image is like the star of the show. It's just so good. So all the supplies will be listed on the blog and the link to the blog is down below in the YouTube description box. So now I knew that I was going to be stenciling this because the quote is beauty from ashes and uh, the story behind this is so good and my own journey from um, ashes to beauty. And so the ashes are that, that grungy wall and all the pieces behind it. And the beauty is the, these bright white flowers, um, almost like grace. And so that's the beauty from the ashes. And um, so I used the Daisy stencil. This is the mum stencil. And then I also used the hydrangea stencil. This is the mum stencil again to get my flowers. And this is the carved circle stencil. This stencil is gonna be one of those stencils that is used for everything because of the different patterns. Um, it, just so many ways that you can use it. So I'm using gesso with my finger and pushing that through the stencil to kind of get a kind of distressed look um, for, with my stenciling. So I've got my flowers in there and now I'm just going to create some vines and I'm starting out with a, a white charcoal pencil and just kind of getting some lines because I was unsure and always go light if you're not sure or you know like I'm using my soft pastel and my um, charcoal white charcoal pencil 
that's a risk-free way to get an idea of how something's going to look because if you don't like it you can always wipe it back um, so I I get my lines get darker and darker as I go because I get more confident about how it's looking and the design that I'm I'm using you know that I'm sketching out I wanted those leaves because I wanted that beauty to be spreading out I want I wanted it to be growing and living and um, so that's why I added the vines I just love it so now that I have it all sketched out I'm I come back in with just some white gesso and really kind of paint in some of the areas to really make it bold um, just not every single area because I like the kind of scratchy lines, but some of those areas nice and bold to kind of um, bring the flowers together. And gesso works great for this nice matte finish. So I'm adding just a few drips to kind of bring some of that white down. And again, it's going back to that kind of grungy um, building kind of feel where maybe paint is um, running or it's rusty or something like that. Adding just a few black sketchy lines in within the white that I painted just to kind of further accentuate and give, that, give it just a tiny bit of definition. Although it doesn't need a whole bunch. So I wanted to bring some of that white up into the corner, but I had to be subtle. And so I just painted some gesso onto a piece of parchment paper and pressed it down and it was perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. It just keeps the eye moving around, kind of balances the piece out. And then the same thing down at the bottom with some of the black. So I'm going to shade around the edge um, with my black soft pastel and just kind of frame that in a little bit. And then I'm going to take some soft pastel and kind of highlight a few areas and add a little bit of kind of halo shadow effect. And then I will <clears throat> grab my um, uh, fine line applicator with white paint and put in my quote and that is it my friends thank you so much for joining me subscribe and like if you enjoyed today's project and I will see you next week well hello loves and happy Sunday to you this is just grungy goodness again I'm just loving it love how the papers um, worked with the idea that I had in my head. 
Um, it just all came together and I love it, positively love it. I hope that you can see all of the different layers on this, like every, all the papers showing through, all the under layers. Uh, so good. And then this, the st I almost, when I first stamped this, I almost didn't want to cover it up. But I went, I kept going. So, <clears throat> positively love it. So, um, when you see this video, there will still be a couple, two more days, a Sunday and Monday, for you to grab the early bird uh, price of the new shelter workshop. Um, and I... I think there will, there's still early bird pricing for Wanderlust as well. I'm not sure. They were close to being out of the early bird slots. So you, there's still time to get that. Um, and then check out all the new stencils, of course. I used several of them in this piece. Um, and then, let's see, what else? These two papers. So I did these two um, journal pages... <clears throat> the video is on my YouTube channel and social media, but these two pages I, were kind of j me just playing with the new stencils, but these two are going to be free to you in the resource library, these two, two sheets. So I just scanned my original sheets and printed them out, and that's what these are, and that's what I used in here for this piece. So you can use them for your fun backgrounds if you want. <clears throat> Okay, uh, I think that is all of the things that I need to say. Um, so this piece, uh, there were a lot of things that kind of came into play, but this, um, this, uh, the words on here, beauty from ashes, kind of came from my devotional time this last week, and I. I just, it just, you know, when you read something sometimes and you, it just kind of touches you, touches your soul, that kind of thing. Um, and I did a deep dive into it and I won't go into that, but it just so touched me. And um, I thought about um, beauty from ashes and what that can mean for me now and what, what that means for me personally and kind of globally kind of thing to like out in the world kind of thing and that's kind of what brought me to this place because I was thinking about beauty f um, from ashes and um, I thought about like an, a wall that you would see in the city and right now we're seeing lots of images of graffiti and different things like that and um, a, a old grungy wall with graffiti and you know how the the um, graffiti artists or urban artists will paint walls to make you know city block walls and just make them this incredible masterpiece and I love seeing that you lo I love going downtown and being able to see all the huge murals and things on on downtown walls and stuff like that I love that and so that's what inspired this so I was creating my grungy um, wall with all the different layers and all the different things down here from like, the kind of representing like maybe you would see paint peeling off and you would see the under layer of maybe something else that was previously painted and how it can sometimes be an eyesore but then when when the artists come and create art over it it becomes this masterpiece and so that's my version of this and how we too how I too can take the ashes of whatever situation I'm in whatever um, season I'm in whatever whatever feels like ashes and ugly and grungy can be made beautiful um, with time with um, effort with work with therapy, with paint, with um, you put in your word of what you can take, what it will take to make whatever your ashes are to make it into something beautiful. And um, I did, there's so much meaning into this 
into the these words that, that I could go on forever. But I feel like my own life it has has been made beautiful out of some serious ashes, um, and uh, I. I I always go back to, again, this place of gratitude. And um, gratitude always turns the, the ugly stuff into something beautiful. Not right away, but it does. And um, that's kind of my, my go-to, is the gratitude place of turning our, our whatever our ashes are. It could, be, it could mean a million things to everyone, whatever that is. Um, don't think that that's the end of your story. Think of that as the beginning. Think of that as the ash where the phoenix rises out of. Think of that as where the, especially, I was thinking about that. There's so many metaphors for this. It's just unbelievable. But I was thinking about the fires that are happening and how the fire is needed to kind of clear the forest. I mean, not to the extent that we're seeing, of course, and what's happening is devastating. But what happens to the ground and the seeds that burst forth from the fire, a pine cone is designed that when it fire happens that it breaks open and spreads seeds and um, more growth happens. Um, there's just so many <sighs> examples of how from ashes beauty can come. And so Beauty can come in your ashful situation, <laughs> um, in your in in whatever situation it is. Beauty can come, and um, it doesn't happen overnight, and it's not easy, but it does happen. And um, I feel like I talked about last week how I feel this shift happening within me, and this is part of that shift, um, part of this this bud that's happening within me, within my art and within my soul, within my spiritual life, with all of these different things, um, this, this shift that's happening. And I love it. I love this, this process of growth. And while it's uncomfortable and um, sometimes I can be unsure, it's, it's exhilarating ex and exciting to feel that, that growth within me. <clears throat> and so, um, I just encourage you today to not see just the ashes, but see the possibility within them, to see the growth that can happen. And um, take courage and be brave, dear hearts, for what's to come if you are there and if you're if you're growing and changing and in the the blooming stages oh go for you and I, I just pray the sun shines on you and you celebrate that and you celebrate that with others and you share your story your story of growth and blooming when somebody else is kind of in that ash period will really encourage them so Everybody's got a role to play in encouraging and growing us, our community, our world. Um, all right, loves, that is it for this Sunday. And I hope that it is restful and, and peaceful for you and that you find the beauty, your beauty, your growth, whatever that means for you today. And I hope that you always, always know that you are loved.